Okay, chem students, today we're going to talk about the ideal gas law. You need your blue notes packet uh, at the bottom of page 5 and something to write with. Okay, an ideal gas is a gas whose particles take up no space and have no attractive forces to each other. In reality, gases do not always behave ideally, especially under conditions of high pressure and low temperature and stuff like that. However, the ideal gas law and other gas laws we use in this unit assume ideal behavior at all times. It just makes it easier for us. This is okay because even if a gas behaves differently than ideal behavior, the gas laws give a good idea of these relationships. Also, we can correct for non-ideal behavior, but that's beyond the scope of what we're going to do here. Now, the ideal gas law is different from the previous laws and it is not used for initial and final conditions. So you only have one set of conditions but this one also incorporates moles. It's the only one that uses moles and you'll see it represented as an N. Okay, our first example of an ideal gas law problem. We need a constant called R. Now R is right here. R is 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres divided by Kelvin moles. Now these units are necessary. So all of our units and the rest of our problem needs to need to match these so that they'll cancel out. So as we read our problem, 32 grams of oxygen gas is at a pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of zero degrees Celsius. What is the volume of the gas? So as we read our problem, 32 grams of oxygen, that's going to be in. We're going to have to convert it first, so we'll come back to it pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury, that's my pressure, that's P. Temperature of zero degrees Celsius, that's going to be T. And what is the volume of the gas? So we are looking for volume in this problem. Now we already know because we saw grams, we're going to need moles and that means we have an ideal gas problem because this is the only one that uses moles. When we rearrange for our unknown, V equals NRT divided by P. Now we need to start looking at all of our components and see if the conversions are necessary. So we know that 32 grams of oxygen needs to be converted to moles of oxygen. So that's right here. 32 grams of oxygen, and there's 32 grams of oxygen and one mole of oxygen that actually equals out to one mole. Now I know that oxygen is normally 31.998 but for this problem I just put 32.0. Now as we come to pressure 760 millimeters of mercury we're going to convert that to atmospheres. One atmosphere is the same as 760 millimeters of mercury so that is one atmosphere for our pressure. And then our last one we need temperature in Kelvin zero degrees Celsius, we get that by adding 273 to the zero, so it comes out to be 273 Kelvin. Now that we have all our numbers, we're going to plug them in. V equals 1.00 moles times 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres divided by Kelvin moles times 273 Kelvin. Now all of this is divided by atmosphere, one atmosphere. Our units are going to cancel. The moles cancel, the atmospheres cancel, the Kelvin cancels. So the only thing we're left with is liters and that's what we want. And then when we do the math our answer becomes 22.4 liters. Now we basically just proved that one mole of a gas is equal to 22.4 liters at STP. We've talked about it before and now you get to see why that's true. Okay, our second example of the ideal gas law. A sample of helium gas is in a 500 milliliter container at a pressure of two atmospheres. The temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. What is the mass of the gas? Okay, so our first piece of information, our volume is 500 milliliters and it is at a pressure of 2.00 and our temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. They want to know what the mass of this gas is, so we're looking for N. 
Now, N is moles, so when we're done, we're going to have to convert our answer to grams, so we need to remember that. So we saw mass, which means mass moles, same thing necessary, it can only be used by the ideal gas law, so PV equals NRT. We need N by itself, so we rearrange it, and we need to check to see what conversions we need, because all of them have to be in the ones that match R. So we need to convert milliliters to liters, so 500 milliliters is 0 0.500 liters. And our temperature, we need to add 273 to our Celsius temperature to get 300 Kelvin. Now we can plug in all of our numbers. N equals 2.00 atmospheres times 0 0.500 liters divided by R, our constant, times 300 Kelvin. So when we do the math here, we get 0 0.0406 moles of helium. Okay, so we solved for moles of helium, but they wanted to know the mass of the helium, so we need to add one more step. 0 0.0406 moles of helium. If we do the mole conversion, in one mole of helium, there's 4.00 grams. We get an answer of 0.162 grams of helium. All right, chem students, that's the end of our unit. Good luck on the test. All right, chem students, that completes the notes for gas laws.